Welcome to episode 5 of Reusable Space Program. In this one, we're going to go for the moon with this quite large rocket. Please join us. So we're at episode 5 already and we are going for the moon. Um, Sean has been complaining, so he's going to do this mission because, you know, he's, he's basically saying there's sexism going on. Nakot. The woman always gets everything and men are always downtrodden. You know, um, Scott Scott and Matt have pointed out to him that actually um, they've done missions as well, but he's he's not having it. He's just it's gone. So this is our craft. It is the uh, the Voyager. Um, it actually has a secondary mission, which is it's got an extra part in its sort of belly of the main craft. It's actually going to do a, um, it, it's a, a mission that will pay some money for testing a part around the moon. But... Voyager is going off and you can see it's actually a three stage craft. This first stage is basically three three stacked engines next to each other and um, the, the, the swivels um, and we're basically using that to go up. It is not going to go again much speed before we actually decouple though and this has got a lot of parachutes down and this is using our sort of parachute approach to first booster stages. So this is like our previous booster stage that we've used although it's actually going to go going at a lot lower speed when it decouples. You can see now, it's it's you know it's going to be twenty kilometers arc when it actually does it. We throttle down a little bit, just because we don't want to go too fast with it. We just want to pull ourselves out of the atmosphere, and you can actually see it's got the parachutes there ready. And on our staging, they will actually really they will actually activate. You can see in the staging on the left hand side there. Um, so we're just moving up through the atmosphere. Sean's Sean's quite happy actually. He's happier than normal because he knows he's actually going to space for once and it's actually not going to be a ferry mission. So we're just gonna wait until the engines burn out, and then we're gonna stage, and that will actually that will be recoverable. Its parachutes will have activated as it was released, and now we've got this craft. And this is basically a new bit of tech. You can see at the bottom of this craft there is um, a little cargo bay. In that cargo bay we have put its sort of avionics component, we've put its battery packs, we've put its parachutes, we've also you know packed all that in. So we've now opened those bays and it's ready. So when I choose to return that component uh, it's got its own control and it's also got its own ability to to uh, to activate its own parachutes and things like that. When near Kerbin it's got signal so it's going to be fine. It's going to basically in effect be its own orbital craft so it is our little orbital stage and that component at the top where we've got the little dark ring tank again that's my locked off tank that will be our um, our Mooner mission so we've got a little science junior on the top there and we've got some other science packs there and it has also got one of those little storage pods so I'm trying to make sure that we're actually packing away our parachutes and our science in such a way that um, it's basically as safe as possible because particularly now we're getting into bigger missions we're gonna have more energy and that increased energy means that we're gonna have an increased chance of us breaking stuff and we're trying to minimize that we don't want to break anything we are hundred percent reusable right now even our fairings remain attached and I'm not actually putting fairings that come off on anything so even when we decouple those decouple components they actually are re retained. And you'll see that in this uh, in this mission later on um, so we're heading up to orbit we're trying to get to orbital speed you'll see we've just been burning all the way up now and, and this is something that is very much a uh, an rp1 realism overhaul sort of player thing where i am trying to burn as much as possible on my arc without turning the engine off um you'll often find a lot of co-op players particularly that played a, a you know a number of years ago would burn straight up turn sideways and then wait and then when they get tap ups burn again um you see i have very little burn left to do which means that actually, if I wanted to, I could decouple my top part and then just have the, the, the booster stage return automatically on a suborbital hop. Or I can use the booster stage just to circularize it or, or anything like that. OK, so here we are. We're just going to come around the uh, around towards the Apple apps now. And we've got a very small burn, 100 and so meters per second, which should be doable with the main booster. So we fire that up, we get as close as possible, and now we're actually semi-orbital, but we're going to leave that one. I can actually monitor that one later, and then we're going to send this craft to finish off its circularization. Now, that booster stage, that booster stage 
potentially would return, but because of the way that physics works in Kerbin, it's actually gonna skip through the atmosphere on time warp. So we're gonna actually be able to return it. So in the next episode, I will show you me returning that because this episode is about going to the moon. Next episode, we're gonna do all the returns and the difficulties of high energy returns and things like that. So please watch out for that. That'll be in the next week. Um, you'll see here, I'm actually rotating the craft so that it's in, it's it's facing normal. I'm not planning on docking to this, which is what I would normally position them for, for docking. I'm doing it just because I've got solar panels. Um, the Apollo missions, when they went to the moon, um, they actually did something similar. It's called a barbecue, barbecue roll, barbecue spit, I can't remember. Um, and the idea was that you'd actually rotate the craft on that axis so that the whole craft would actually get heated from the sun equally all the way around. So you didn't have one hot side and one cold side because then you get expansion contraction of metal and you get all sorts of pressure differentials and things. And it, you can you can have problems with that. So they would rotate the craft slowly. I'm not sure if that happened in Apollo 13, but uh, it'd be interesting to actually look that up. So I'm uh, look, plotting my maneuver node to the moon and I want to try and... I could do a fly past, and I, at this point I was looking at the fly past. I thought I could do a little fly past and uh, free return and then come to the to Kerbin. But I look at my, my um, periapsis on Kerbin and I'm thinking, I'm still going to have to put energy in when I'm out there anyway. I have a good amount of fuel. I have a good amount of Delta V. I've locked away a load of Delta V for my return just in case. You can see the, the stage that's been recovered there is the uh, initial booster stage, that three engine stage, not the other one, which is currently going around the planet. So um, I did toy with the idea of a free return and eh, free returns are not as easy as... Um, and they're not as easy as they could be, shall we say, but they, they are quite a nice little thing to do, particularly on early missions if you have limited fuel. And I was originally considering it for this program. Uh, one problem is that you, you do have to be quite specific. Um, so you can see here, I'm actually moving it in and out and round and round. Um, I decided that I was going to go, I, I really want as much science as possible. So I don't want to send a second mission up to do this, which is if I did a free return now, it's what I'd have to do. And I would probably use the same craft again anyway. Um, if I was being really safe, I would do a free return with this craft and then I'd measure out how much Delta V I had left after doing that and then I'd know what was going on. My concern is that by fiddling around to try and get a free return, I'm actually running out of time. <laughs> um, because I know that this is, you know, this is gonna be a, a nice little flight going on at the moment. So what I try and do is I wanna try and get science high and low around the moon. Uh, so we're gonna do this low pass. Ideally, I'd want to do this and then come back out and be just straight suborbital around a uh, suborbital, not suborbital, but I'd like to leave the sphere influence of the of the moon, uh, moon, and and end up into a really nice orbit of Kerbin that brought me near the atmosphere, and I could do a little bit of working for that. But I cannot. Um, so instead, I am going to just see what happens. It's a very Kerbal approach, which is the first time I've done a very Kerbal approach in this series. So beautiful view. I will say we've got some environmental uh, visual enhancements and stuff like that mods on. If anybody wants to know about them, please uh, put a comment down below and I'll, I'll try and put a list together. But I think it makes the whole game just look so much more beautiful, particularly the the the, uh, the scatter flare of the uh, of the sun and things like oh, Kerbal, Kerbal, not the sun, Kerbal. Um, you can see I've got that uh, that mission to do around the moon where I've got to actually activate that little engine. And that engine is basically on our in our, in our bay there. So if you actually get a look at it at some point, you can actually see in that bay at the bottom, there is an engine along with parachutes and, and whatnot and fuel supplies. Um, this craft is designed to be not, this won't be its only mission, shall we say. This is going to be used a few different times uh, for a few different missions. It's it's quite a multi-purpose craft with mini, minimal modifications. Um, so we're just going to speed forward time until we get to our burn point, which is always nice. Um, I want to go a little bit early because I want to try and be as accurate as possible. Uh, you tend to find with this is not a massive craft, but particularly with big craft, you you have to start off early because that you don't get balanced acceleration throughout the entire burn. So it's not like 50% on one side, 50% on the other. Um, you'll notice I do have maneuver nodes. We spent all of our money, our orbital money, on things like getting maneuver nodes. Uh, so the tracking station, the astronaut station, all that sort of thing. So that's all been upgraded so we can actually do this mission. You can do Muna missions without that. 
but uh, those things lead to crazy craziness. Um, so uh, you can try it, please give it a go. You know, get get to a, a tech level where you can get to, to the moon and then try it without any maneuver nodes. I have done it before. You, I, I often think you need a lot of Delta V to do it because um, yeah, you, you're likely to mess up a bit and you have to counteract things and you have to do things in a non-optimal way. Right, so Sean, he's quite excited right now. He's very excited, in fact. He is thinking to himself, I'm going to be the first Kerbal to the moon, or to moon. He can't say it correctly either. He's actually showing finally some excitement. He's been in orbit. He's done everything Natcott's done, but now he's going to be the first. He feels the thrust of the engine behind him, pushing him backwards into his seat because finally he's he's under force again he's not actually felt force on him since he's been up in space he's been weightless look at him he's so excited um he may not come back but he's on his way there um sean sean has argued for this sean has argued to be the man that, that t tested all of these things to put his life on the line and he has now got the opportunity to do it and he is excited so he's burning away he's re re impulsing impulsing away um, you can see the craft looks quite odd because it's got all of these little doors open um, and that is partly just to protect it make it uh, streamlined but also to protect it because I can't afford to lose for example those solar panels coming back through the atmosphere that would be a nightmare they, they would burn instantly um, if you look back at my um, back to basic series where I did some error breaking yeah solar panels just burn up so we're going to come to the end of this burn and I think we're going to finish it just a little short and then we're going to just tap it over the line nice and carefully we don't need to worry now because we're very much on the way to the moon to the moon now the important thing is the moon is actually a moon so you can call it the moon it's just you've got to be more specific by calling it the moon at the same time so you see there we've got a um we've got a, a little uh, we're going to lower it lower it periapsis just a little bit by continuing to burn just a little bit and we're going to get nice and close yeah oh we've got a second so if we actually come straight out of this we're going to another encounter later on which is interesting however that encounter will probably put us into a very high sort of circular orbit around Kerbin and we'll never get back to it so we have to not do that right so what do we do next well um the next thing is to put us back into that barbecue roll position because we want to make sure that our solar cells are basically getting electricity at all times and i, I messed this up a little bit i'm the controls are the opposite way to the way i think they are which is a habit of mine and i just need to rotate it around what i actually should have done is rotated the whole craft on its axis and then done this just so i knew exactly where we we're facing um and there we are we just we're just going to make sure and this is important always make sure that you're actually getting some electrical charge coming in because it is very easy to mess this up and then you uh you end up having to get out get out and push or hope that the sun moves at some point or your craft moves i do not have persistent rotation or anything like that um i probably should have it on but i'm keeping that for my realism series so a little plug there for um a very british space program my little realism series um which is a little different to others you might have seen Anyway, we, we time warp through and Sean, Sean probably sleeps at this point. I'm not entirely sure how long it takes, it took a few hours. This is this is nowhere near the Apollo mission time. So we're about two hours into this mission now. And, you know, Sean's been doing some stuff, doing some science. He's got he's got Matt and and Sean and, and Scott on the on the radio telling him to do the science and check the things. And he's he's getting out. He's doing he is the first Kerbal to do an EVA high above Kerb. And he's very excited by that. Another first. He's thinking himself. Yeah, the Kerbal Book of Records, I'm in there now. That's great. He doesn't, you know, he, he forgets about the fact Nakot's the main title holder of first person in orbit. But he knows, you know what, first person to go to the, the moon, that's going to be important. He's also, at this point, starting to think about the really the really famous ones are the ones that land, though, aren't they? The ones that land on the other bodies. Yeah, if somebody, somebody used to land on the moon, they, they'd be famous. And he's, he's got that little, that little devil on his shoulder, that little green dark green ready purple kerbid kerbal devil do they have devils in kerbal i don't know i'm guessing a kraken it's the kraken on his shoulder the kraken's on his shoulder telling him he could be the first to land on the moon yes. anyway <clears throat> he starts gibbering to himself and he gets a slap from ground control saying you know focus you're now in the sphere of influence of the moon is it any different he says well no it feels pretty much the same although i'm accelerating in the opposite direction now um so he's now around the moon and um 
this is the point where I have to make a decision. Do we modify his flight past uh, when he's at his lowest point? Or do we go for orbit? Do we go for orbit around the moon? And um, yeah, it's a difficult choice because this craft is on the brink of having enough fuel to safely do this. And by safely, I mean, in case I mess something up, being able to pull him back. I do not have the tech right now to rescue him. So if this goes wrong, he potentially could be here for a long time. And I do not have any other pilots apart from Nakot. So this would just compound problems. And for the next, the future missions I have in line, I'm gonna need two pilots to do them just in case. We're doing this without a safety net. I will not be doing this like this again. This was very much a grab the science as much as you can. Now, the task of testing the engine that we have requires that we be in orbit and that is pushing me a little bit towards the idea of orbit i know that i'm going to orbit the moon the moon at some point soon it may be this mission it may be another but do i risk it so the call comes into sean sean we think we think we should go for orbit we think we could do this but it's risky and what do you think sean says he says go for it i want to be the first i want to do this he gets told, well, you know, Nakot, Nakot's, uh, Nakot's available. We could we could send, no, don't send Nakot. He says, nope, nope, I'm doing this. I'm going to go for orbit. If you don't tell me how to do it, I'm going to do it myself. Anyway, the argument continues. He approaches his periaps. They're not going to tell him how to do it because they're still debating it. They're still arguing. Scott and Matt don't know if this craft has the ability to do this. Sean takes it into his own hands. He's like, nope, I'm sorry. You're going to have to figure out how to get me back then because I am going into orbit. He turns the craft, he fires the engine, and he shouts, tell me when to stop because I don't know what's happening. He gets a rapid response saying stop. And at that point, while he is floating around the moon, the first Kerbal to orbit it, we're going to end the episode there. You will have to find out, will, will Sean get back? What will happen to the booster?